you know, we're trying to make sure people know for sure they go to heaven. So would you say that you're a hundred percent sure you'd go to heaven? Yeah, um, right now, sir, I, I gotta be honest with you. If I die right now, I, I am not going to heaven. Okay, okay. So what do you think a person has to do to go to heaven? What did you say? What what do you think a person would have to do to go to heaven? I mean, first of all, you gotta accept uh, Christ as, as your savior. Um, that's pretty much uh, the, the, the first thing I learned from going to church at Landmark. Okay. You know, you you gotta accept Jesus. You gotta believe that He died for us, and um, you got, and also you gotta believe that He's coming, and that's the sign God is coming because look what's going on now. People can't even talk to people. Right, yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of crazy stuff going on. I hear you. So, um, you would say is believing on Jesus Christ and then also believing that he's coming again is how a person would uh would go to heaven? Yes, sir, and also you gotta follow all the Ten Commandments. Okay, okay. Um is there anything else or is that it? Okay, okay. Well, you know, that, that sounds pretty complicated because, you know, none of us can keep all Ten Commandments. As a matter of fact, probably most of us don't even know all Ten Commandments, right? Yeah, that is right. So, the Bible actually says that, it, that the gospel is, is simple. And to go to heaven is actually really, really easy. So, you know... Since, you know, we've been talking already and you said you believe that I came here for a purpose and I believe so too. So can I just explain that the Bible says it's even easier than having to obey all the Ten Commandments? Yes, sir. Okay. So in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And that means nobody is perfect. Would you agree? Yes, sir, I agree. Awesome. Me too. So the reason we're not perfect is found in verse 23 of that same chapter where it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the reason we're not perfect is because we've sinned. Okay? Now the Bible says sin is the transgression of God's law, or you know, when we break God's law. And you've already mentioned God's law in the Ten Commandments, right? That's God's law. Yes, sir. So the Bible's telling us we've all broken that law. And, you know, some of the things on that law, I, I probably couldn't name all of them right now, but I know I can name a few. And some of them that would be, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. And there's another one that says, thou shalt not bear false witness. That means we're not supposed to lie. Now, I know I've told lies in my life. Have you ever told a lie before? Uh, that, that's what a, a, a good thing I'm fighting with right now, um, pretty much. Okay. We all tell lies. Yep, yep, we all tell lies, right? So because we tell lies, that makes us a sinner. And you know, the 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 law that God gave us is to keep people safe from harming each other and and from doing bad things like that to each other. You know, it's just like on the streets around here, we have speed limits and stop signs. Mm -hmm. You know, those laws are to keep the streets safe so that when we're driving, people don't get injured, right? And, you know, God gave us his rules, his laws, so that we don't, you know, we don't steal from each other or kill each other or lie to each other. And, uh, but inevitably, we do lie and, you know, we're going to, we probably speed and do those kinds of things too. Not that those are God's laws, but those are man's laws. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I were to speed and, and get caught by the police, you know what would happen? Uh, you got a ticket. That's right. So whenever we break a law, there's a penalty. And God has laws, but he also has penalties if we break his laws. Mm -hmm. So in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. Is death. Yep. So that word wages, do you know what that word wages means? Wages, uh, like wages, like K? Right. You nailed it. It's like being paid. If you go work a job for 40 hours, you expect to get paid for the work that you do. That's your wages. That's what you earn. So the Bible says what we earn for sin is actually death. Okay, that's the penalty. So the penalty for speeding is maybe a $100 fine. The penalty for disobeying God and sinning 
is death. Okay. Now, most people think of death as just this body going into the ground eventually. You know, we, we don't know when it's going to be. We hope it's like way off in the future. But it, we don't know. It could be today, really. But um, the Bible talks about death of not just the body. The Bible also talks about something called the second death. Have you ever heard about that before? Uh, second death? Oh, yes, yeah. sir. Okay, okay. That's fine. I, I didn't hear about it until someone actually showed me from the Bible as well. So the Bible tells us in Revelation 21, 8, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. So the second death, the Bible says, is a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. In other places in the Bible, it's given another name. You know what the other name for that place is? Um, no. Okay. The more common name is the Bible calls that hell. Oh, yeah. When we go to hell, yeah. Right, right. So hell is a, pl a place of burning, fiery torment, right? Yep. Okay. So the Bible is telling us that there's a list of people that are going to go to hell. And, you know, a couple of them, one of them would be murderers, right? It said murderers. Yes, sir. So, and that makes sense to us, right? Someone that would kill somebody and, 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 and take innocent life away, you know, that makes sense that they would go to hell, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, how many people would someone have to murder to be a murderer, do you think? Uh, all it takes is one. That's right. It just takes one to murder somebody. Mm -hmm. So, on that list, it also says liars. How many lies would someone have to tell to be a liar? One. That's right. So the Bible says all liars have a part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. So we all have lied. So in God's eyes, we're all liars. So we actually all deserve to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. But do you think God wants us to go to hell? Um, no, sir. Absolutely not. So, you know, God provided a way that we don't have to go to hell. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the good news. That's the part that I really would like to tell you. So in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, the Bible says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that's super important. So the Bible says he, he, he showed us his love while we were yet sinners. Now, that's super important and very interesting because God's love is not like our love. And the best way that I like to illustrate that, and I'm sure you're familiar with the story of Jesus Christ when he was being crucified. Have you heard that story before? Oh, yes, sir. Awesome. So when he was being crucified, those Roman soldiers, they were beating him, punching him in the face, spitting in his face. They put a crown of thorns upon his head and then eventually crucified him. But the part of the whole story that's really amazing is one of the things that Jesus actually said while they were beating him and leading him off to crucify him, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that's a pretty amazing statement when you think about what was being done. You know, Jesus being innocent of the crimes they accused him of, and even through all that, because those Roman soldiers were just obeying bad orders, they didn't know, you know, what they were doing, but God still loved those people. So that's very interesting to think about. So... The reason that that's so important is because you know what most people think is that we have to do good things. We have to try and obey the commandments and live right for God to recognize us. But, you know, those soldiers were not trying to do right. They were not trying to do the best they could. They were actually putting Jesus to death, but he still loved them. So can you see how God's love is different than our love? Yes, it's really, really different. Yep, yep. And, and, and such an amazing love. So that's the first thing about Romans 5.8 I want to talk about. The second thing is at the end of the verse, this is how he showed his love. It said, Christ died for us. Now, I want to just kind of establish who Jesus Christ actually is. Mm -hmm. And because that's very important. Did you know that the Bible tells us that there's false Christs out there? Yep. Absolutely. So the devil doesn't want people to go to heaven, so he wants to to trick people into believing someone is Christ and they really are not. So that's why I like to make sure that we understand who Jesus is from the Bible. 
So the Bible says that Jesus was born of a virgin. Do you believe that? Yeah, not the Virgin Mary. That's right. And the Bible also says that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Awesome. And it even goes on further and says that Jesus not only is the Son of God, but that he actually is God in the flesh. Did you know that? Yes. And do you believe that? I believe it. Awesome, awesome. And we, you know, we refer to that as the Trinity. I don't know if you ever heard that before. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. So that's the Jesus of the Bible. And there are some people that teach Jesus was not God. So that's a false Jesus. We, we want to talk about the real Jesus of the Bible. So we already talked about the crucifixion, right? How Jesus died for our sins. Yes. Well... The Bible says not only did he die for our sins, but the Bible actually says that his soul went to hell. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Okay, okay, yeah. Most people don't know that, and it's very important. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 31, the Bible says, And he, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ from the dead, that his neither was his body left in hell, or his neither was his soul left in hell, or his body did see corruption, excuse me. And so the Bible's telling us that his body did not see corruption because he resurrected, but it also says that his soul was not left in hell because his soul was also resurrected. So the reason that that's important is because what do I deserve because I'm a sinner? Uh, if you're a sinner, um, I mean, based on what the Bible says, uh, you go to hell. That's right. So if, if the wages for sin is for me to not only for my body to die, but my soul to go to hell, in order for Jesus to die in my place, to die for me, not only would his body have to die, but his soul would actually have to go to hell as well, right? Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, that's what makes the gospel so important and so amazing. So that's why... I was talking earlier about, you know, if I got a speeding ticket, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I got a speeding ticket that was $100. And, you know, I'm like, man, I'm strapped for cash right now. I don't have 100 bucks. But let's say you came along and you're like, you know what? I'll pay your speeding ticket for you. Would the government let you do that? Um, I think they will. Yeah, they will. They don't care where that money's coming from, right? They're just glad they're getting that money. So... But could you pay fifty dollars and they'd be okay with that if the if the ticket was for a hundred? I mean, they will. They'll take the fifty, but I'll still owe more, right? I'll still you owe the other fifty, yeah. right? So in order for that ticket to be paid in full, you would have to give them a hundred dollars. That is correct. And then once you give them that hundred dollars, I'm free and clear, right? You free. That's it. So because I deserve to go to hell because of my sins. If Jesus paid the full price for me, all my sins have been paid for by him, and he went to hell, then that means there's nothing else that I would have to owe, right? No. Okay. So the Bible says that Jesus, in that same verse, says that Jesus resurrected from the dead. That means he conquered death and he rose again. And it's important to understand that he rose again because he conquered death and hell the sins that he paid for were not his own, and he actually rose up again from the dead. And upon doing that, he actually purchased a gift. Have you ever heard about the gift that he purchased? Uh, no. Okay. So back in a verse we looked at earlier, we thought we were talking about earlier, is Romans 6.23. The first part of the verse, if you remember, said, For the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. The rest of the verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we have two different things going on here. The first part of the verse says the wages of sin is death. So the key word we looked at was wages. That's what we earn, right? The second part of the verse says, but the gift of God. So we have a wage and we have a gift, right? Yep. So with a wage and a gift, in both instances, you're getting something. So if you go to work and get paid $100, or if someone walks up and just hands you $100, in both cases, you're getting $100, right? But you know what the big difference is between the two? Mm -hmm. Is how you get them. So if you have to work for it, that's a wage. But if someone else works for it and gives it to you for free, that's a gift. Do you see the difference between the two? 
Okay, cool. So if I try to work to go to heaven, then the Bible says the wages of that is death. I can't earn heaven because all I can earn is hell. So that's why Jesus actually went to hell for me and purchased the gift. And a gift is something someone else pays for to give you for free. And it says the gift is of God and the gift is eternal life. Now, you know what that word eternal means? That means forever. That's right. So the Bible is telling us that that gift is a gift that lasts forever. Now, can God lie? No, no, never. Never. So if God says the gift is eternal, it means it's life that lasts forever. How long should it last? Uh, eternity. Yeah, it should last eternally, right? Yeah. Forever. So if God gave you eternal life, he said this will last forever, how long should it last? Forever. That's right. Now, what if tomorrow you told a lie and he took it back? Did that last forever? No. What would that make God? I know you don't want to say it right exactly so because we know God isn't a liar we know that if he says he gives you this gift that's going to last forever then it will last forever right so and he even said that in Titus chapter 1 verse 2 he said in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began so before God even created the world he made a promise that if you would believe on Jesus Christ and accept that free gift, that you could go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, before he created the world, he made a promise. And did you know who he made that promise to? Uh, no. Well, if we remember that there's a Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, so before the world began, the Trinity came up with this plan, the, the plan how to save mankind from their sins and to give them a home in heaven, and so God made promise to himself, and since God's a trinity, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established, then God, on his own honor and his own ability not to lie, made that promise that you can have eternal life. So isn't that pretty amazing? That is. Now, the one thing I want to make a distinction about, because earlier you did mention Jesus, believing in Jesus, but you also said to live out the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Now, eternal life is a gift, correct? correct? So, a gift is something you cannot earn or do anything good to get. So, if you had to believe Jesus and live the Ten Commandments, wouldn't you be trying to do something good to get that gift? Yeah. Would it be a gift if you had to do something to get it? Um, no, because you were that's right. You'd be trying to earn that wage. So that do you see the difference between what the Bible says where going to heaven is actually just a free gift given to us and what you said earlier, which was try to keep the Ten Commandments? Yes. Okay. So that's important. And the reason why God is able to make that gift eternal is because Jesus died and he paid for all of your sins. Past, present, and future. Just like if you paid my full $100 speeding ticket... It's all paid for. I never have to worry about them coming after me about that speeding ticket again. So Jesus died for all of your sins, and he get, can give you that gift of eternal life because it's all your sins have been paid for. Does that make sense? Awesome, awesome. So, but the, the question now would be, well, how do I get that gift? Since I can't earn it and it's free, well, it's just like any other gift. Someone offers you a gift, you all you have to do is just receive it, right? Awesome. So, now, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And I asked you if you believed Jesus was God, that he lived that perfect life, that he died, was buried, and rose again, and you said you believed that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So then the Bible says, if you believe that in your heart, then you will be saved and that word saved is the same thing as you would think of being rescued, right? So we were deserving to go to hell, but if we believe that Jesus took our place and paid our payment, we can believe in him and ask him to save us, and he'll rescue us. He'll save us from hell, okay? So in verse number 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Now, you told me that you'd already believed in Jesus, but you were also trying to get those Ten Commandments down so you could go to heaven, and you thought you couldn't go because you've been struggling with lying or whatever other Ten Commandments you were breaking. So my question is now, are you willing to say, you know what, it's not by the Ten Commandments at all, it's only by Jesus, and if I trust just Jesus, then I can know for sure I go to heaven. Would you be willing to make that statement? Okay, so... Then the next question would be, would you be willing to call upon Jesus to save you now that you've realized the truth of what the Bible says? Awesome, awesome. So it's simple, you know. All you have to do is ask Jesus to save you and acknowledge that you're no longer trusting in, in living that good life and you know it's just a free gift that he, he purchased for you and just ask for him to save you, okay? So I can lead you through that prayer right now through the door. And, you know, no doors or walls or nothing can, can stop the prayer of salvation. So God's going to hear you, okay? So if you can repeat after me, and the Lord will hear you, okay? So, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I deserve hell. Please save me and take me to heaven. I no longer trust in myself. I trust in you alone. 